Okay, I'm going to start chapter 11 now. Um, we're going to only look at the first three sections of chapter 11, and kind of the main topic here that we'll be talking about is systems of linear equations. Uh, a system of linear equations is uh, where you have one or more equations with one or more unknowns. Uh, so I've got some examples of some systems. Uh, in this problem here, I've got two equations with two unknowns. Uh, it's typical to enclose the equations with a with a a, a bracket here, and the unknowns would be x and y. Okay, now a solution to the system is uh, all the values that are solutions to each equation. Uh, so, like if we were to try to solve the system, maybe we were to, we were going to try to let x be one and y be three. Uh, well, if x is one and y is three, two plus three is five. Um, but then negative one plus nine is not negative six. Okay, so one and three would not would not work out for us here. Um, if we were to just kind of get play around and guess and check, uh, if we were to try x equal three and y equal negative one, then six minus one is five, and negative three minus three is negative six. Both of those look good. Okay, uh, so three x equal 3 and y equal negative 1 uh, would be the solution. Okay, You could also write that as a point uh, on a graph. I'll talk about that shortly here. Um, but uh, now obviously when we solve a system we don't want to be using guessing and checking. Okay, uh, We'd want to know more sophisticated methods here but uh, uh, this would be just to get the, the idea across. Uh, I've got some other examples of systems. Uh, here's um, another system of two equations with two unknowns. Now this would be called a, a nonlinear system. We're not going to work with any of these, um, meaning that um, you know we're not going to have to worry about like powers of x or like a 1 over x or like an e to the x or ln of x or stuff like that. Those are not linear systems. Okay, those are not lines in other words. Uh, and that's going to be our focus here is just on linear systems. Uh, here's a system of three equations with three unknowns. X, Y, and Z would be the three unknowns. The idea would be the same. Uh, you know, find X, Y, and Z such, such that all three of these equations would be satisfied at the same time. Uh, here's, uh, now, this, now the number of equations doesn't always have to match the number of uh, unknowns. Like here's a, a system of two equations with three unknowns. Okay. Um, now, if a system has a solution, it's called independent. Uh, sometimes a system will have no solutions. We call that inconsistent. And a system, it, it, uh, sometimes a system will have infinitely many solutions. We call that dependent. Um, there's three methods mentioned in this section for solving a system, and we'll look at another method in the next section. Uh, so one method that we could use for solving a system is the graphing method. Um, we're working with lines when we have a, a linear system. So here's an example. Okay, suppose I want to solve this system. And um, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these two equations in slope-intercept form. That way I can graph these two lines by working off of the slope and the y-intercept. Um, so I've graphed these two lines here and I've got them labeled. Now the solution to the system with the graphing method is going to be the point where these two lines intersect each other. So if you're using the graphing method, like it would be good to be neat with the graph. You don't want to slop up some quick thing and then have to eye down where the lines intersect. Otherwise, that kind of defeats the purpose of using this method. Um, these lines are going to intersect at 2, negative 3, like I mentioned. So I think x equal 2 and y equal negative 3 would be the solution. Uh, of course, I'd want to check that. So if I plug in those numbers into these two equations, is it true that 2 minus negative 3 is 5? Yes. And is it also true that 4 minus 3 is 1? Yes. Uh, so 2, negative 3 would be the answer. Um, you can write your answer either as a point or as individual values for x and y. Either way is, is, is fine. Okay. You're still saying the same thing. Here's another example of a uh, of a, a system where you, um, you're using the graphing method. I've got two lines that intersect at the point negative 5, 6. And so x would be negative 5, y would be 6. You could, you could verify that in, in, in this one. Okay, here's another example. I've got um, 
Uh, again, two equations uh, which, uh, if I rewrite into slope-intercept form, would represent two lines here. Both of these lines have a slope of negative 2, and uh, the first one has a y-intercept at negative 1, and the other one has a y-intercept at 4. Now, these would actually be parallel lines because they have the same slope, and parallel lines, of course, will never intersect. My solution is where the lines intersect, and if that will never happen, then there's going to be no solutions to the system. Uh, a system that has no solutions to it is called inconsistent. Y you could also write no solutions, that's, that's fine. Or um, uh, here's the, the, the empty set also means no solutions. Um, that's fine. Okay, and here's another example. Um, I've got a, another system of equations. Um, now, if I were to solve both of these equations for y on both of them, I would have y equal 2x plus 4. Okay, so I draw that line, y equal 2x plus 4. I draw that line again, and it's the same thing. So I'm looking at a line on top of a line. Uh, well, my answer is where the lines intersect. So if I have a, a line on top of a line, then of course those two lines will intersect infinitely often. So there's going to be infinitely many solutions to this system, and we call that a dependent system. Now, um, to give our answer, I'm going to use an ordered pair form here, x, y. It's just I'm going to have everything either be in terms of x or everything be in terms of y. I've chosen x here. Uh, so where I see y, now I know what y is in terms of x, right? It's 2x plus 4. So I would just simply write 2x plus 4 in the y coordinate. That way everything is in terms of x. Now this is one way that you can describe to somebody how there would be infinitely many answers because um, any x value you give me, I can always find a y value by taking two times that number and then adding four. You could give me infinitely many values for x, and so therefore there'd be infinitely many points that would gen be generated here on these two lines and producing infinitely many solutions then. Um, solving a system by using the graphing method does have a major drawback. Um, Often we're not going to be able to accurately determine the coordinates of the solution in an independent system. So like here's an example where the solution here is not really numbers that you'd notice ideally on a graph, okay? Um, or that, that would be hard to see on a, on, on a graph if, you know, unless the point was labeled. Um, but, uh, uh, and that is a major drawback, okay? So therefore it would be necessary to know some other techniques rather than just a a, a graphing method. The graphing method works nice, you know, if the numbers are nice whole number values or, or you know, easy to see on a graph, okay? Um, the next uh, method that we'll need to know is called the substitution method. Uh, with the substitution method, you want to pick an equation and solve for that variable. It doesn't matter which equation or which variable, just pick one and solve, and then substitute that into the other equation for that variable. So like in this problem here, uh, I've chosen to um, solve the second equation for y. Okay, now where I see y in the first equation, I'm going to replace that with 5x minus 6. That way everything in the first equation is in terms of one variable, which puts me back on more, more familiar ground here. Uh, if I solve this equation for x, I get x equal 1. Knowing that x is 1, I can then plug that back into my substitution equation. 5 minus 6 is negative 1, so x would be 1 and y would be negative 1. Uh, I think that's the solution. Okay, and if I check that, uh, is it true that 3 minus negative 2 is 5? Yes. And is it also true that 5 minus negative 1 is 6? Yes. Uh, now again, it doesn't matter which equation and which variable you solve for. Okay, like I could have solved the top equation for x, that would have been fine. I would have still got the same result here. It's just in, in doing that, I would have been working with fractions early on, and that wouldn't be, you know, necessarily a fun thing. So uh, look for the times where you have like a 1 or a negative 1 in front of the variable and consider solving for that variable to get started. Okay, here's another example. Um, and uh, we're using the substitution method. Okay, I see the, there's a 1 in front of x here in, front, in that first equation. If I solve that first equation for x, 
uh, x equals 7 minus 2y, okay, and I'd want to substitute that then into the second equation where I see x. That way everything is in terms of y. Um, so I'm going to find y first in this problem, and uh, I found that, so y is 4, okay, and knowing that y is 4, I can then plug that into my substitution equation to see that uh, x would be negative 1. So x equal negative 1, y equal 4 would be the solution to that equation, or that system, rather. Okay, here's another one. Now, in this next example, I don't have a 1 in front of any of the variables or a negative 1. That's okay. Um, I still just pick an equation and solve for the variable. So like here, if I uh, uh, select the second equation and solve for y, um, then I'm looking at y equal 5 halves x plus 1, and I'm going to substitute that into the first equation where I see y. That way everything is in terms of x. Solve this for x, and you get x equal 1. Uh, plug 1 back into the substitution equation there, and it looks like y would be 7 halves. So x equal 1, y equal 7 halves would be the solution to that system. Now the point of this would be to say that, you know, you're not always going to have a 1 or a negative 1 in front of the variables. Um, that's, that's okay, you know. Uh, here's another example. Okay, now in this next one, it would make the most sense to plug the first equation into the second one since the first equation has already been solved for y. Uh, when I do that, uh, everything is in terms of x now, and if I solve for x here, x is actually eliminated, and I end up getting negative 33 equals positive 33. Of course, that is not true. Uh, so this equation would have, or this, excuse me, this system would have no solutions to it, uh, or, or that, again, we were calling that an inconsistent system. In general, that'll happen if the variable is eliminated and you have something that's not true at the end. Okay, here's, a, here's a, one more example of the substitution method. Uh, if I were to solve this system by solving the uh, top equation for x and then plugging that into the bottom equation for where I see x, uh, solve for y now, uh, y is actually eliminated and you have negative 12 equal negative 12. Now that's not news to us, we already know that negative 12 equals itself. Uh, but this problem is different from the last one because negative 12 equal negative 12 is true. Uh, so in this problem here, it's not going to matter what you have. Uh, you're always going to have a true statement when all is said and done when you're using the substitution method. Uh, this would be a dependent system. There's infinitely many solutions. And if I give my answer as an ordered pair here, x, y, uh, if I were to solve this guy here for y, I've solved for x, but if I were to solve for y, I would have y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. That way everything can be in terms of x. Now, I could have everything in terms of y. You know, if I were to do that, my answer would have been negative 2y plus 4 comma y. That would have also been an acceptable answer. Uh, and that's one way to... Uh, describe to somebody how there's infinitely many solutions to the system. Uh, any x value that you give me, I can find a, a y value by taking negative one half times that number and then adding two. You can give me infinitely many numbers for x, so infinitely many points can be generated on these two lines here. Okay, the elimination method would be uh, the third method to know here. And uh, with the elimination method, we want to eliminate one of the variables. It doesn't matter which variable, just plan to eliminate one of them by adding the equations together. We sometimes call this the addition method um, because we're adding equations. Uh, so in this problem here, uh, suppose that I want to um, solve by eliminating x. To eliminate x, I'm going to want to multiply both sides of the bottom equation by 2 because when I add those equations together, 2x minus 2x is 0, x is eliminated. Uh, that's what I wanted. 3y plus 2y is 5y, and then 1 minus 6 is negative 5. 5y equal negative 5 means that y is negative 1. Now that I know y is negative 1, I can plug that back into either one of these two equations. It's not going to matter which one because y equal negative 1 has to satisfy both. Uh, so I just pick these, this second one here 
and um, uh, if y is negative 1, we get x to be 2. Uh, so the solution to this system would be x equal 2 and y is negative 1. Now it doesn't matter which variable you want to eliminate. You know, I could have eliminated y to begin. I would have found x first then. Uh, to eliminate y, I would want to multiply both sides of the bottom equation by negative 3, because then when I add 3y minus 3y would be 0, y would be eliminated then. Um, sometimes we have to work with both equations in the elimination method. Uh, in this next example here, uh, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by negative 2, and in doing that, I will eliminate x. Um, when I add these together, 6x minus 6x is 0, x is eliminated, and we see that y is negative 5. Knowing that y is negative 5 means that when you plug that back into either of these equations, um, I use the first one, I get x to be negative 6. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I think that x equal negative 6, y equal negative 5 would be the, uh, the solution to that uh, system. Okay, uh, here's another one. So, uh, same deal, we're using the elimination method. Uh, I'm going to eliminate x, uh, multiply the top equation by negative 2, and then add the equations together. Negative 4x plus 4x is 0, x is eliminated. Also, y is eliminated, though, and so we get 0 equal negative 2. Now, that's not a true statement, 0 equal negative 2, so this equation is going to have, uh, this system rather, is going to have no solutions to it. Um, in general, that's, you know, it's not going to matter what method you use if uh, all the methods are going to produce the same conclusion, okay? Um, and we'll just look at one more here in this video. So uh, here's a, another uh, system of equations. I'm using the elimination method. Uh, if we plan to eliminate x, uh, again, I'll have to work with both equations here. Multiply the top one by 5 and then the bottom one by 2. So then when you add negative 10x plus 10x is 0, but y is also eliminated to give us 0 on the left. We also get 0 on the right. 0 equals 0, that's a true statement, okay? And uh, uh, that would indicate a dependent system. Uh, so there are infinitely many solutions to this system. Here would be my answer written as an ordered pair.